swords of power and magic. The Sun Sword. Don't worry, we can play rough too. The Sword of Omens. Thunder! 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 Thundercats! Ha! The Sword of Grey Skull. By the power of Grey Skull! The Sword of Protection. For the honor of Grayskull, I am she -Ra. Excalibur. Excalibur, be my strength! The Star Sword. And the Star Sword. The Golden Lance, which often took the form of two swords. The Star Saber from, Transformers Armada. <music> Dyron when the Magic Sword, the Black Cauldron. Sting the Spider Bane. Now I will give you a name, and I shall call you Sting. Sting! 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 Oh, reach, reach. We are no match for Sting! The Sword of Gryffindor. The Master Sword. It's always a sword, isn't it? At least in the West. In pre-modern Chinese martial circles, the staff is considered the, the grandfather of all weapons. The straight sword is the gentleman of weapons. The curved sword is the general of weapons. And the spear is the king of weapons. This should be illustrative of the importance, and role, of each. While swords do have their place on the battlefield, a sword by itself, in most formats, was not an overwhelmingly great weapon of war. Certainly better than a dagger or knife in open combat, it is eclipsed by pole arms and blunt impact weapons in battles where armored troops were fighting in formations. And while swords like the Roman gladius are considered the sword that conquered the world, it was the combination of the gladius paired with the scutum, what some might call a tower shield, that led to the Roman soldiers' overwhelming effectiveness in the battlefield. Truly, in times long past, before the age of gunpowder, it was Swiss army slash multi-tool like weapons like the pole axe, the halberd, the bec de corbin, and other pole arms which featured blades, hammers, hooks, spikes, and picks proved far more serviceable and may well have been the first implements a man-at-arms might reach for. But when popular media wants to equip a hero or heroine with a magic weapon, it is usually a sword. A foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. Watch a movie, read a novel, or peruse a graphic novel in the fantasy genre, and one can consider it a safe bet that a magic sword will pop up eventually. Its powers would vary from being impossibly sharp, to being able to slice through the very fabric of reality itself. The anime Bleach features Sinigami, or Japanese Grim Reapers, in possession of magical transforming swords. The materials they can be made from are usually fantastic. Either enchanted steel, or some form of unobtainium, which would explain why super-powerful magic swords aren't available at your local Walmart. Mithril, or a Halcolm, he hero Kane, Adamant, and other fantasy metals may be used, whether alone or in combination, such as with pattern welding or modern Damascus techniques. So, why swords? If it is a question of making a magic weapon out of fantasy metals, there are far more economically viable ways to do so. Spear heads are essentially knives or daggers attached to long handles. They require less material and less skill to make than most swords. The same can be said of axes. Axe heads also use less material than most swords, and axes are still quite effective in skilled hands. 
hammers are another option, with Mjolnir coming to mind, though granted the MCU version is unusually large for a war hammer. All of these options would give a hero, a very effective magical enemy dispatcher using half or less of the fantasy metal and less specialized skill to forge. Why do we see magic swords so often? In many of the series mentioned above, the hero must travel to the danger in order to conquer it. And, barring the ability to magically summon and dismiss the weapon, like many henshin heroes can, it must be carried to the scene of the battle. The portability of a sidearm, like a sword, means the hero can travel with it attached to his hip or back without it becoming an encumbrance. And whip it out when it was needed. Likewise, the ability to make a small weapon disappear on a hero makes him or her look less threatening and more approachable. Swords are also light and effective in skilled hands, since armor in fiction is often treated as a uniform and not as protection. Liken this to Sun Wukong's Riyi Jingu Bang or the compliant golden hoop rod. A staff which weighed 17,000 plus pounds, which, being a compliant staff, could be shrunken down for easy portability. Wukong often kept it tucked behind his ear. With the exceptions of the Sun Sword. Sword of Omens. And the Golden Lance. Which shrunk to the size of a sword hilt a dagger, and a short rod respectively. Most other magic weapons could not do this. The other reason, again in my opinion, is that swords are cool. They are knightly weapons. Officers' weapons. As the Chinese example stated before, they are the gentlemen and generals of weapons. The spear is often the foot soldier's weapon. And rightfully so, because it is practical for that purpose, but the sword was something special. It required more skill and generally more expensive materials to make, as explained previously. And having your sword taken, or broken could be a symbol of defeat or dishonorable discharge from one's duties. I am that is. My sword shall wield for me.